Good morning, good afternoon, family. Welcome to the Mental House with me, your host, Khadija. You know, more and more facts are coming out uh, about uh, Sade Robinson. And I want to give my prayers, and I'm still got you holding you in the highlight, Sheena. Um, and I'm hoping and praying that God has given you some some kind of semblance of uh, rest on your heart. So you don't, every day, I'm sure, is a challenge and a struggle for you. I know it is. Um, so let's just get into what the latest of this evil maniac um the the newest um findings and let me just share that with y'all Light on the murder of Sade Robinson and how her alleged killer reportedly planned her death weeks in advance. Sade Robinson was last seen alive on a dinner date in Milwaukee with Maxwell Anderson, their first date seen here in surveillance images from WITI TV. Cell phone records show that they ended up at Anderson's house and then she was never heard from again. The next day, someone found a severed leg in a nearby park belonging to Robinson. Anderson is now accused of killing, dismembering, and leaving Sade's body parts all over Milwaukee. WISN Television reports that a friend of Anderson's is now a confidential informant in the case. He told police that Anderson showed him a room in his basement where he planned to kill Sade. The search warrant indicated a plastic tarp covered a sanitation sink and three saws were found in the room. The informant told police that Anderson planned on shooting Robinson and then dismembering her body in the room before disposing of her body throughout the city. Now, the defense has denied that this, uh, these claims have any relevance and that this informant has any information. Let's bring in to discuss attorney and law professor Dante Mills and forensic death investigator, professor and host of the Body, ba Body Bags podcast, Joseph Scott Morgan, is with us. Thank you both for sticking around with us. Joseph, I'm going to start with you. We've got this search warrant that is showing things that were recovered inside of the home. Uh, a pee trap from the sanitary tub in the basement, a pipe in the laundry area, swabs of stain and cushions on a leather couch with different debris. I mean, they've, they've got a lot of stuff from inside of the house. Uh, how is this, in your opinion, going to be connected and put in front of a jury to indicate that this was, in fact, something that was planned out and that it connects to Sade Robinson? I don't, I don't want to step on my colleagues toes here relative to and get too far off into the law uh, relative to this but I have to say that if anything smacks of premeditation this does this individual is purposed and we do know this relative to uh, dismemberment cases there you need privacy for this and what many people don't understand uh, is that when you have cases of dismemberment it is uh, arguably one of the most messy affairs that an individual perpetrator can engage in um, because of all of the physical evidence that's left behind. It requires a lot of preparation. You have to have knowledge. And then all those things that you don't account for, uh, particularly at you know, even uh, a molecular level of the things that you're leaving behind. Uh, I don't want to be too uh, grotesque, but when you think about, say, for instance, even uh, elements of bone that are left behind as a result of sawing, uh, undetected blood, for instance, and even skin tissue, hair, those sorts of things. And the fact that things would be lined with plastic uh, goes to this idea that he was mindful of this. And I got to tell you, it really sends a chill up my spine because it's hard for me to fathom that this would be his first time out of the gate right. relative to something like this. And it, maybe it's just something he's been planning for a while. And he started with this, this poor young lady. Uh, I have no idea, but this would have taken time and purpose. There are many people who are poised listening to see if there are going to be any connections between this defendant and any other unsolved cases, because even in his home, 
There was women's clothing that was located yeah. in the beams. There was this bedazzled compact mirror that seemed to belong to a woman. So there are these uh, names in a notebook. So there's this possibility, but we can't go there until we hear from police if they've got a connection. Uh, Dante, can you speak to uh, where this defense is right now? Because you've got this informant, and that really could just finish off this case for the defense but they are disputing that this informant is actually legit should the state even go there they got a lot of evidence otherwise he was the last person seen with Sade do you put this informant on the stand who may have credibility issues absolutely because what it shows and I, and I thank the professor for leaving me a, an avenue here is the means motive and opportunity of the defendant um, to have planned this crime um, and to have the ability to carry it out. So you want to, when you're prosecuting a case, you want to make sure you have all of the pieces in place, especially as something as grotesque as this, as something as gruesome uh, as murder, um, especially when you're talking about uh, the, the possibility that there could have been other victims or would have been other victims. You want to make sure that this person if he is responsible for this, does not have the ability to do it to anyone else ever again. Um, and that means following through with every piece of evidence that you can. So you want to pair the fact that you had her cell phone ping uh, at his house to show that she was there. Uh, and then you bring in this witness to talk about um, the, the layout that he had, where he had the plastic. He, he said in advance that he was going to do these types of things. Um, it, it's disturbing that he had another woman's ID at his house, a 27-year-old woman. So you, you, you want to make sure that you have in, everything included in your case so that the jury hears as much as possible and they have everything they need, they need to come up with a guilty verdict if, in fact, he is responsible for this and make sure he goes away for a long time. Okay, fam, let me take a break right here for a minute. First of all, put a comment in the, uh, in the section, number one, if you believe that this was his first killer, killing it, and put a number five, if you believe he didn't kill somebody else before he killed this beautiful young lady. All I could think of is put myself in, uh, in Sade's situation. All I can, I, uh, my heart, it almost explodes when I think about at what moment she knew this was it for her. When she went down, or if he said, let's go down in the basement or whatever, um, or if he just shot her right out, my mind can't get past that. Because if she saw all that apparatus and tarps and shit in the basement, and knowing that, all of a sudden, you know, and now this dude is a freaking monster. What comes over you? That fight or flight? And um, my my prayers again, Sheena. I'm I'm just want you to know that we're praying for you, Sister Scarborough. We are praying for you, and I'm not gonna let your daughter's memory. Um, be selling or am I going to forget about her and for the other, other rest of the young ladies because I do believe it's going to be more and this dude is a damn Jeffrey Dahmer type of crazy MF and there's a whole bunch of them running around America Um, this is not an isolated case Um, I'm reading this book called The Delectable Negro so, and what history shows me in this book that y'all been cutting us up, eating us, or uh, the dominant society, I'm saying, for a long time. Now, I'm not saying all of them do that, but they have a propensity. Okay, just like when, uh, 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 when you talk about dog bites, people think it's pit bulls or rot. Well, the biggest propensity for a dog to bite is a child. Okay? So when you start talking about that, who has the biggest propensity to cut up people, 
uh, Hector Lannibal, uh, Hector Hannibal Lecter style. Put them, they body parts on sandwiches, on bread and shit. And you come up with these type of uh, people. Um, and, and I just can't let it go. Let me continue. Joseph Scott Morgan, how aggressively do you think detectives are following up on these leads? They're looking for the woman whose ID it was, the woman's names in the notebook. Are they aggressively going after this case, or are they really focused on Robinson, and if they are led to something else? I mean, inquiring minds want to know. Full court press here. And I'm telling you, you have to overturn every stone in this area when you begin to think about uh, forgotten individuals that are walking the streets, these sorts of things, and looking for any elements that might, any kind of foreign DNA that's going to be inside of that basement. And I, I have to remind folks that there are any number of serial perpetrators that are out there over the years that have kept mementos. I think most famously is probably BTK. Many people remember him. And he actually had a hiding place where he would keep elements. Uh, and, you know, they have, and I'm not a forensic psychologist, don't want to be one, but, you know, they go back and they fantasize about these things and they try to relive it. It's something they can hold on to, you know, long after a body is gone. So these little elements, you talk about things like uh, uh, compact mirrors and all these sorts of things, and even intimate items, you know, with underwear and things like this. And I have no insight into what they may have found. However, I think that it would be prudent for them to tear this house down uh, or, or, or go through it as with a fine tooth comb looking for any kind of foreign DNA that does not tie back to that residence specifically. And they need to pursue every potential lead because I don't know how many open cold cases they have up there involving females that might fit her demographic and her specifics as far as age and appearance. But I, I, I think that they're probably pressing forward with this. Uh, let me follow up with you, Joseph, because this home was sold. It no longer belongs to Maxwell Anderson. Another family, ideally, is living inside of it. And the prosecutors and police have said, look, we've gathered all of the evidence we need to. We can go back where we want to. But you're talking about a full-on, deep, detailed, it seems like, a search of this house. You mentioned the words tear down to get to this information. Do you think that that's yeah. possible to do when you have another fully functioning family inside of that home that's not going to really be happy about the crime scene being uh, torn apart like that? Yeah, well, uh, I don't know. I, I, you know, I, I, I would... <laughs> It's interesting that this house was sold to somebody and they might not have had knowledge of this. I, I'm kind exactly. of interested in that aspect as well. But, yeah, I mean, if the families cooperate. Now, as far as Maxwell Anderson's family, how in the hell did they get to sell that house that bad after their son has been responsible for one, maybe more than one murder? And... You had to go back in that in there per her family because they was finding shit in the garbage cans and whatnot outside his backyard. These people, man, these you know, oh god. Waiting with the police, uh, you had talked about, or it has been mentioned, things being found in rafters, these sorts of things. It sounds as though they're they're going through every inch. Uh, of this house, but that door has to be left open, and also any kind of further excavation that might need to take place uh, in the surrounding yards as well. And let's keep in mind, he had various dump sites that he was going to. Famously, you know, we covered this on my podcast. Uh, famously, you know, we had, God, I hate to talk about this so badly, so horrible, but limbs you know, appearing out in the lake and this sort of thing uh, that had been uh, placed out there and had washed back ashore, perhaps. Uh, nothing is off the table here. Absolutely. The gut-wrenching case, such a difficult one for the family of Shade Robinson, this community. Uh, Joseph Scott Morgan, thank you so much for your insight. All right. Thank you. That was from uh, the court chief.
TV. I'm saying to y'all, with all due respect, if y'all think that y'all cannot tear this house down, uh, then you 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 sadly mistaken. You you need to you're gonna have to have a um just a total the fact that you're finding things inside the house, um, in between the rafters and things like that, then it's 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 very important that you have to start thinking about do we need to destroy this house? The fact that he's digging holes all over the damn place, out in the yard, uh, trying to make a damn sanctuary or a museum for all the people that he done away with, further should let you know that this this house is just has to be um it 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 just has to be uh what's it called just torn down. It has to be. Oh my God. Keep your head up. Robinson. Scarborough family. Keep your head up. I don't know. If. 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 um, If. Milwaukee. Well this trial is supposed to start in December. And I don't know how much evidence. You know. Because they still investigate. And it can come up between now and then. Because it could be a lot. I just wanted that family to know that they're in our prayers. Her cousins, her sister, her dad, her mom, her uncles. And let's just keep hoping that um, we get some justice for Sade. All right, I want to know what y'all think about this because this story just drains me. I want to know what y'all think. Do you like what you hear? Please subscribe and share the channel. Um, and if y'all don't think that the um, mental is important, then this story should tell you that it's real important that we keep up with our mental health. I'll see you in the next video.